Hi, this is Andrew Sir from Judhbir High Secondary School, Gurbatan. I'm going to do uh, physics with you, and uh, I'm starting right from the first chapter. Uh, usually, I start light, uh, and uh, all my career I have done that one uh, here in Judhbir. But then uh, I'm going to, as I was asked to do this, so I'll start from electrostatics. Okay. Today what I'm trying to do here is since we have very, you know, like limited time frame and then once this video goes, uh, it has to be, you know, like I think we'll have to wait for next week for this to come. So possibly what I will try here is finish nearly about first and the second chapter, otherwise half of the second chapter. So in the first chapter, we almost have the introductory part of electrostatics. Let me bring you idea of electrostatics. Statics here means rest. Well, the other part of it is dynamics, you know. So when I'm talking about like uh, electricity, current electricity, so that comes in the dynamic electricity part. Whereas the electrostatic, it deals with charges at rest. Now, let me bring you the idea of charge, okay. Electrons are mostly responsible for the charge in a particular body. So basically when I talk about electrons, there is a topic called quantization of charge. Now what do you mean by quantization of charge? Let's see this. Now we all know the charge of an electron is 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 in Coulomb. Coulomb happens to be the SI unit of electric charge. E equals to 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 Coulomb. Now this is very interesting fact about a charge of an electron. So what is interesting about this? Let's see this. Whenever a body gets charged, it means the body will be charged only in an exact multiple of the charge of an electron. This is so interesting fact. This is the concept of quantization. Now let me bring you the concept of quantization. What is quantization? Where did the word quanta, quantum or quantization came from? It originated from Max Planck. Max Planck started this. He was working on radiation and when he was working on radiation he found out that the radiation energy emitted was in the packets. All right, It was not a continuous form but it was in some packet form that's like particle type hi-fi. Okay so in the packets exactly and that tiny packet of energy was termed as quanta by Max Planck. It was coined by Max Planck and later on Einstein actually proposed that for dual nature of light later on otherwise quantum theory of light and then he said that particular term as photon. That packet of light, that packet of energy of light was termed as photon by Einstein. Exactly in the similar manner here in static x-ray when I'm talking about quantization of charge it means charges when it is given out or absorbed by a body let's say then it is done in an exact integral multiple of the charge of an electron so this charge is very interesting so it means if the body loses electron it will have to be in an integral multiple it means the whole number multiple not exactly like a fractional type okay say 10 electrons 20 times e 30 times e 1000 times e 10,000 times e and so on and on that's the idea all right now this electron has another special quanta, you know like quality if I go down uh, and when I finish the chapter electromagnetism later on by your teachers and then you will find that that in the topic chapter called magnetic properties of matter there you will see something called as a Bohr magneton it means the dipole moment magnetic moment associated with you know tiny particles and if you see Bohr magneton was termed on the basis of the magnetic moment associated with the spin of an electron and that is not only that but it was also found to be equal to the magnetic moment associated with the orbital motion of the electron in an hydrogen atom. That was Bohr magneton and this Bohr magneton has a value of if you see it is 9.274 into 10 to the power of minus 24 in ampere meters square that is your MB called as a Bohr magneton now 
This one is also interesting. This is the magnetic moment associated with electron and this is the smallest quantity of magnetic moment present in any matter particle. There is nothing smaller than this. So electron has two striking features. One, the charge of an electron. Another one, the magnetic moment associated with the electron, the spin of the electron, otherwise the orbital motion of an electron and that is this. Well, the concept of quantization, hopefully it is clear to you. Well, I'll go to the next section of it. How, what do you mean by the body is charged? See, basically a body cannot be entirely positively charged or entirely negatively charged. What I mean to say is, if I say the body is negatively charged, it don't mean that the body has only negative charges in it. We all know any matter particle comprises of atom. An atom, if you go to the structure of an atom, then we see inside the nucleus of an atom, we have positive charges called protons. And outside that, surrounding it, according to the Bohr's, you know, like concept of uh, the structure of an atom, we have electrons revolving around it and these are the negatively charged particles okay you know like let me cut short this particular point and divert your attention to the idea of what do you mean by positive and the negative charges now negative charges does not mean less or small quantity of charge compared to the positive only the convention was given as if one kind of there are two different kind of charges so if one kind is given as a positive charge exactly the replica of the other one is taken as the negative charges that's said otherwise if you look at the positive charge and the negative charge say the charge of a proton or a charge of an electron if you go and have a C8 then the charge of a proton is exactly equal to the charge of an electron if I see it all right okay well now let's focus to the idea of how electrical okay I was talking about atoms and well I was saying that nobody is strictly positively charged or strictly negative charged what do I mean by that one let's see say a body is comprising of atoms as I already told you so it has positive charges inside the nucleus so there is no way I can bring out those positive charges from the atom it is still there in the matter so what I can only do here is whether I can remove the electrons from it or otherwise add some more electron in that particular body so when I remove the electrons from it then the number of negative charges are smaller compared to the positive charges inside the atom that's the reason why then the body will be positively charged in uh, you know like precise sense I would say net positive charge to be more better whereas on the other hand so when the body has some more electrons absorbed by it otherwise if the body acquires some more electrons then the body the net negative charge in the body becomes more compared to the positive charge and then the body becomes negatively charged that's it okay now how how are body bodies charged like how do they become electrically charged bodies okay basic idea about the bodies being charged is number one it's the method of friction which I've already learned that in class 8 I hope well friction will cause the charge separation and obviously it is the electrons which plays the role here because you cannot move a proton which is deep inside the nucleus so what actually electrons do electrons separate out and the protons remain there so one of the body will have more number of electrons where the other body will have less number of electron meaning it is positively charged the first body which will acquire electrons in it will be negatively charged that's the idea there is another way of making a body charged and that is but for this purpose I will need a charged body this mechanism is called induction now what is induction let's see say if I bring a charged body let's say this is a positively charged body and if I have a conductor here so induction basically I'll have to talk about induction in two different formats one is in case of a conductor another one in case of, of a insulator otherwise I would more say that one as a dielectric but as substances depending upon the nature all right electrical nature of the substance I can uh, actually uh, you know, categorize substances into three categories number one is called a conductor 
where we have uh, you know like maximum number of free electrons in it and the electrons are responsible the second one we call as a semiconductor uh, where we have these electrons and the holes which are actually the charge conductors and the third one we have is an insulator where do not we do not have any free electrons for the conduction of x-ray well we will talk about this one more when we go to the chapter of electronics there we talk about band theory of solids and there why why insulators do not have free electrons and why do conductors have free electrons it will be very clear when we do that particular topic okay here we have this body is an uncharged body but mind you it's a conductor oh. here I have a charged body all right this is the body which will induce now what is the process of induction let's see it now since this body is positively charged this will attract electrons from you know like the entire body here since this is a conductor it has so many free electrons in it so these free electrons are attracted towards this one let's say this end becomes negatively charged because of the movement of electrons so when this electrons move this way you know like the atoms the particles over here will lose electron and there they will have less number of electrons in them meaning they will have positive charges left out there all right mind you if one electron migrates towards this side then it will leave a proton there so it means equal number of charge separation happens here these are called the free induced all right because they can move around they can if you have anything you can like if you want to conduct them they can easily pass over but then if you see this particular electrons over here then these are bound they are fixed they are fixed induced all right all right this is a process of induction so in an induction what happened is the charge separation happened here the electrons migrated towards the side and the proton are left over there on the other side well the same thing what happens in a uh, dielectric let's see this is a dielectric now now in a dielectric what happens is we don't have free electrons so it means electrons cannot migrate here but what happens there is these atoms which are there there in these atoms the positive this positive charge will attract the negative charges in this atom slightly towards this side and the protons you know the pos a slight positive charge will be left on the other side because it will be pulled it will be pushed repelled so negative charge of the atom will be you know like oriented in this fashion whereas the positive charge will be oriented the other way around like that so we will have this if you look at this then all the positive charges will be oriented on the other side whereas the negative will be oriented to the left of it so this happens and this particular phenomena of you know like the atoms where the positive and the negative charges separates itself without the actual movement of the particles otherwise no even movement of free electrons are involved there this phenomena is actually called polarization so this is dielectric polarization okay so I'm going to stop here about the topic called as in induction this is induction so induction phenomena is responsible in order to make a body charged but what I can see over here is the body is not charged simply here but the charge separation happens so if you want to connect this one to say earth all right then this earth from the earth what will happen is electrons can migrate up there they can neutralize this uh, free induced positive charges and there you know this uh, charges can be neutralized whereas if you I simply remove this positive uh, inducing body from here then this negative charges will actually go and spread over there and then this body becomes negatively charged so that is how I can charge our body with the help of induction so there are two methods by which I can charge a body number one would be uh, with a mode of friction and the second one would be the mode of induction okay well uh, let me skip my topic straight up to the next chapter this is all about introduction in the first chapter if you happen me to you know like proceed on with the first chapter then you can actually have my Facebook number which is a nine 
6350204222. So you get me on this number and you can suggest me. So what I'll have is, you know, like I'll see the majority of suggestion and I'll come across with that in next class to come. Okay, today I'm going to push myself up straight to the second chapter and that is the chapter of electric intensity and potential. Well, I'm going to begin first with Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law states that any two charges, let's say there's a charge Q1 and there is another charge Q2. Any two charges attract or repel each other with a force which is directly proportional to the product of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. Let's have a see what do you mean by that one. Let's see this. This is the, you know, like the line which is joining these two charges. And let's say R hat is a unit vector. Uh, conventionally, I can take anywhere this R hat. I can take this direction, otherwise that direction. That is my wish or uh, your wish, what I mean to say. So let's say my origin is taken there and then I'm taking my R hat in that direction. Let's say the distance between this Q1 and Q2 is R. Then Coulomb law says that the force of attraction or repulsion between them will actually be equal to here. It is 1 by K and then this is Q1, Q2 divided by uh, R square. Here you have it. This 1 by K is actually a constant. This is a proportional constant. I will try and understand this one. What actually this 1 by K is stand for this depends upon the nature of units you have chosen and the type of material you are considering so based on that one the values of this one by k differ all right this is force if i give a vectorial notation for this one then it's going to be something like this let's say the force on the charge 2 due to 1 that is f to 1 is going to be equal to it is q1 q2 this is 1 by k of course divided by an r square and i can direct it like that is that okay well, that is, uh, say, the force on charge 2 due to charge 1, it is R hat over there, so this is the idea. Whereas, if I see the other one, that is force on 1 because of 2, on the other hand, will be given as 1 by K, Q1, Q2, divided by R square. And this time, I will place this one as minus an R hat, because I have already considered R hat to be directed that way, so the force on this one, see, see, it's going to be something like this. This is F1, 2. And that is going to be F1 to 1. That's the idea. Now, depending upon if the charge happens to be negative, then I will replace this Q1 by minus Q1, or Q2, if Q2 is negative, then replace by minus Q2, and so on and on. All right. Now, what I wanted to tell you here is, though I have taken the vectorial notation for F12, and if I go and have a see what is F12 here as minus of 1 by KQ1, Q2, well, this can be written this way otherwise. And that is equal to minus of F of 2, 1. Well, so F12 is equal to minus of F21. I have taken a vectorial approach of this, but I suggest you that whenever you deal with numerical problems of anything like that based on this force or even intensity, then consider direction. Direction is much more better compared to the vectorial approach in that case. Is that okay? All right. We will push next to the topic called intensity. All right. Now, what's the concept of intensity? Well, before I come to intensity, uh, otherwise potential, there are two aspects called intensity and potential. Now, these intensity and potential are the two attributes or two physical features with the help of which, which I can describe the electric field. Now, say, if I have a charge, if I have a positive charge, let's say, posted somewhere here, so I have a positive charge here, let's say. Now if there is this positive charge, then it is in the region surrounding this positive charge, if I bring some other charge, let's say, uh, this is, let's say, plus Q charge. And if I bring some other charge, let's say, a plus a small Q charge, let's say. Now if I bring this plus small Q charge over here in the vicinity, otherwise close to this plus Q charge, then obviously this plus Q charge will start feeling the effect of that plus Q capital Q charge. 
All right? But if suppose say, if suppose say, I'm not talking about this plus Q charge, and this space was vacant initially, all right, and not the board space, I can say this space was vacant initially. Now then, suppose I bring this plus capital Q charge from somewhere, let's say originate and bring it over here. Then this particular plus capital Q charge will feel no influence of any other because no other charges are present there. But for this particular plus Q charge, it will feel the effect of this plus Q, plus capital Q charge. Are you understanding with this? This, this particular plus Q charge, all right, will have an area or the reason, all right, where its dominance can be felt, where its influence can be felt. So that particular reason surrounding it generally is referred to as the field of that particular charge. Though strictly speaking, field is something different when I'm talking about intensity, I'll talk about that next. All right, well anyways, let me bring you the idea of this particular field in some other aspect, all right? This same particular kind of force we also have, all right, in a force called, these are generally named as inverse square forces. Uh, you see, the gravitational forces, capital G, M1, M2, divided by R square, look at that. They have a similarity. These two forces has a similarity between them. Check this, all right, so called as inverse square forces. Okay, here and there. That particular force is a gravitational force. Okay, so when I go to gravitational force, exactly here, I can feel this idea about this one. Say, suppose say, this is my charge, and some alien body, let's say, all right, try to enter or comes very close to the Earth. Then what actually this alien body will do is like, ah, all right, when it enters some reason inside, then it will feel like, ah, something is present there. Oh, what is there? And one will feel that, yeah, there is Earth. But had that earth been not there, then this alien body would easily drop anywhere without the influence of any other thing. But since this earth is present here, this particular alien body, one, it's, you know, like, enters a reason, then it will feel another, you know, like, add a drag because of this earth present here. Earth will actually attract anybody. Say, take for instance you, okay? You are here, all right, on the surface of the earth, you're okay. Suppose you want to go away from the surface of the earth. You jump, let's say. What will happen? You keep on jumping. No, you don't keep on jumping. What will happen there? Earth will drag you downward. You see, earth, all right, earth will keep on dragging you until you reach a particular point. But some point, let's say, if you are, say, projected, if you are projected, otherwise, if you jump with a velocity, let's say, 11.2 kilometers per, all right, second, then what will happen? Earth will never pull you back. You know why? Because you will shoot in that region where the earth influence will no more be there and then you will up there in the space, earth influence won't be there. So that means the field of the earth has, you know, like certain region from where to which it can extend. All right, beyond that, it is not there. Exactly that's the idea for this positive charge we have there. So in this region, we have the field where the influence of that charge can be felt. If this plus charge enters here, all right, it will fill the interaction, it will fill the pull or the push of this one, if it is not there, somewhere here, then it will nowhere feel it. Not exactly, I won't say here, because if I really say, then this force actually decreases in this fashion. It keeps on going, 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 but it will never be equal to zero, like that. It keeps on going, all right? Drops down in the form of inversely as R square. Okay, so that's like E, and then I would say R square. But the presentation comes different here, all right? We're talking about where this distance um, uh, well this we will deal when I talk about another topic uh, especially uh, conductors and the electric field inside the conductor due to the conductor and so on well anyways this is the rough idea about how field all right otherwise the force let me more say the force and uh, it varies with R not an R square but an R here we go okay well, that's the concept of the field. Now, in order to describe this field, all right, in order to describe this field, there are two physical quantities. One we call it as intensity, another which we call as potential. Let's talk about intensity. What is intensity? Now, intensity at a point in an electric field is defined as the force experienced by a unit positive charge placed at that point. Now, what do you mean by that? Let's see this. Talk about this plus Q charge once again here, all right? And then if you talk about a uh, point over here, let's say this point is A. 
all right it is at a distance let's say r from this plus q charge all right where i will fix an origin all right so my r hat is directed that way let's say this r happens to be the position all right r vector happens to be the position vector of a let's say now if you want to find out what is the intensity here then what do you do is you bring a plus one charge here and find out what is the force experienced by this plus one charge whatever is the force experienced by that plus one charge that will be called as intensity at that point electric intensity otherwise very loosely also called as field at that point let's have a see so according to coulomb's law the force of attraction or repulsion between this here between this plus q charge and this plus one charge here will be equal to let's have a see there what is it it will be equal to f all right and here yeah, it is termed as E, the electric intensity field, otherwise field intensity or electric intensity or simply intensity E will be equal to Q and then 1 divided by an R square with of course that constant. I will talk about this constant very quickly now in a brief. Let's see what do you mean by that. There you go. That is the intensity at that point. Now vectorially, let's have a see vectorial idea of that one. We all know that like charges, they repel each other and unlike charges, they attract each other. So if I have a plus Q charge over here and there is a plus one charge here, then obviously the force here is going to be repulsive. So here the force on that unit positive charge E, which we call as intensity, will be directed that way. It will be directed from O to A. So directed along O A. Precisely, otherwise vectorially I can write that one as this is like Q by K R square with R. There you see, that's the intensity at that point. All right, let's talk about this K thing very quickly. Okay, so that constant 1 by K, we'll see what is that. F is equal to 1 by K. Give me a break, I'll come back to that intensity very quickly. Let me tell you about this constant because it's so important over here. All right, so 1 by K, Q1, Q2 divided by an R square. Let's have see this, 1 by K. 1 by K basically, all right, it depends upon the units chosen, all right. Right? So if I'm going to talk about if, all right, in SI unit, if I'm going to express, and in air, listen very carefully, SI unit and in air or vacuum, F is going to be 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught and Q1, Q2 divided by an R square. So this 1 by K takes the form of 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught, where this epsilon naught is actually called permittivity. of free space permittivity of free space all right the value of epsilon naught comes out to be 8.854 into 10 to the power minus 12 unit of this one is supposed to be have a see unit of this one i'm looking for epsilon naught here q1 q2 divided by f with an r square so it's like coulomb square per newton per meter square so this is the value of epsilon naught and actually how did i get this then i can go straight up to this one it is like 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught has a value of 9 in to 10 to the power of 9. 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught has a value of 9 into 10 to the power of 9 unit of that one Newton meter square per coulomb square Newton meter square per coulomb square that is the value of 1 by 4 but now if you push on with this one like what is epsilon naught and they bring this 9 into 10 to the power 9 down here and find out what is that epsilon naught then you will exactly get this epsilon what is this epsilon naught as I told you it is permittivity of free space what is permittivity now permittivity is an electric character of a material it is the electric character of the material I'm trying to tell you all right which you will study when you do the chapter called electromagnetism especially in the chapter of electromagnetism when you see see the velocity of light in air or vacuum then it is given by 1 by square root of epsilon naught and a mu naught this epsilon naught happens to be the electrical character called as permittivity of the free space whereas mu naught is called permeability now that's the magnetic property of the matter well which will be discussed later well there you go so this is the case of in SI unit and in air. SI unit and in air. Is that okay? All right. Now, 
in a SI unit and in any other medium, what happens? Let's see. Now that is F will be equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon. Now this epsilon is called permittivity of that particular medium. All right, 1 by 4 pi epsilon called as absolute permittivity and then that is Q1, Q2 divided by an R square. That is in a SI unit and in a medium. In a medium whose permittivity is upside down. Let's, let's find out what is that actually. Now generally if I look at something called as um, upside down R it is called relative permittivity. Relative permittivity of a medium is actually given by upside down by an upside down knot. And in most of the cases, relative permittivity comes out to be something called as K. Now this K is called dielectric constant. Dielectric constant of a medium K and that is equal to epsilon naught and that is epsilon by an epsilon naught. Here you go. So what is epsilon then? So epsilon will be equal to epsilon R, epsilon naught and that will be equal to K epsilon naught. So if I bring it over here then, then that F now becomes, this F now becomes, F will be equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught with a K and then Q1, Q2 divided by an R square. There you go. From here, you can even find out what is the concept of this K, dielectric constant. It is, comes out to be the ratio of the fill. All right, here, if you see this, what is K? Then here, uh, this one is actually, if I call this one as F1, let's say, for the time being, F1, then F1 will be equal to F by uh, K. The F is in free space. F is Q1, Q2 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught without this K and then R square. All right, so K is hanging down there. So what is K then? So K is equal to F by an F1. Here you go. All right, so what is K? K is the ratio of the fill between, all right, any two charges in vacuum to that in the medium. Now K is actually called dielectric constant. Dielectrics generally called as what? They are called as insulators. Okay then, well what happens in CGS unit? Let's have a see the same thing in CGS unit. Now in CGS unit and in air. In CGS unit and in air. In CGS and in air. 1 by k happens to be 1. It means k is equal to 1. Capital K there is equal to 1. So your f will be equal to q1 q2 divided by an r square. Whereas in, in CGS and in a medium other than air or vacuum then this one this particular k capital K happens to be the small k called as di electric constant. Same thing, that same dielectric constant here and then your F will be equal to Q1, Q2 divided by K with an R square. Here we go. So these are, well you don't need this force idea here because you don't place on the other side that particular idea about here also. So I have to bring it an R hat over here uh, to tell it precisely that that is a vector over here because once I represent this as a vector form here, I cannot leave it alone like that without representing with an R hat. R hat is actually unit vector all right along r well basically that much i would say about force and the, uh, in the different system of units we have rightly seen what this coulomb's law can take forms of going back to intensity all right we just got the idea about intensity that intensity is the force experienced by unit positive charge now unit positive unit positive in idea of is just taken as a standard the intensity is the force experienced by unit positive charge placed at that point okay now the next thing which describes the fill all right will be potential electric potential now let me describe electric potential to some extent now what is the concept of electric potential bring it here i know it describes the field but let me talk about electric potential to some details let's say now if you want to talk about the 
the transfer of heat otherwise flow of heat from one body to another if they are in thermal contact with each other let's say the body A and the body B are in thermal contact with each other this is body A and the body B they are in thermal contact with each other let's say all right then the flow of heat from body A to body B or body B to A will depend upon one particular factor and I hope you people know it and that is temperature. So temperature is that particular physical quantity which decides the flow of heat from one body to another when they are in thermal contact with each other. Exactly in the similar manner, suppose say any two bodies, say hydrostatics I'm talking about, any two bodies otherwise cylinders all right, are connected to each other and they have you know like so liquid otherwise say water in them all right once you know the connection between these two is opened all right then if the water flow starts then the flow of this water will depend upon the factor called as level of water so it is the level of water which decides the flow of water from one body to another in a connected system exactly in the similar manner we have one particular topic called as potential. Potential is that particular character which decides the flow of charge. All right, charges flow from a body at a higher potential to the body at a lower potential. All right, but then in particular context of potential, since we are talking static electricity rather than the current electricity where the motion of charges are involved, so there's a reason why I will bring in another definition of potential. What actually is potential? The alternative definition of potential. Let's see. So I know that this reason here is the reason where the influence of this particular positive charge let's say any charge can be felt so this region happens to be loosely filled of that particular charge plus q all right now let's take two points over here one point here and another point here all right so if i talk about a point a and another point b here particular points will develop a kind of character that if I have to move any other charge let's say a uh, plus Q small letter Q charge from this point to that point then all right strictly speaking this particular work which is to be done here it is independent of the path chosen it means like I can take it this way I can take that way I can take this way I can go all around here and bring it over here so it's absolutely independent of the path chosen the work done will exactly come out to be same no matter whichever path you follow like path 1 path 2 path 3 and path 4 if you go but then the W1 will come out to be same W2 W3 and W4 will all come out to be same and what is that that is actually equal to VB minus a VA VB minus a VA VB minus a VA and so on and on what is this V then this V is actually call potential at that point now what is potential okay let's bring in more than so if you want to find out what is the potential at a point all right then the potential at a point let's say this any point let's say I have any point P over here so if you want to find out what is the potential at a point P all right due to this particular charge plus Q here mind you in absence of this plus Q charge there is no potential there's no fill there is no intensity and there is no potential but if there is this plus Q charge then in the surrounding region of this plus Q charge there will be fill and because of that there will be intensity and there will be electric potential now let's see what is the potential at a point P described as okay it is said as the potential at a point P is defined as the amount of work done to bring a unit positive charge from infinity from infinity to that point P so whatever the work I do to bring this unit positive charge from infinity to that point P that amount of work done okay suppose that I do the work W to bring this unit positive charge from infinity to this point P then this W will be said as potential at the point P so the potential at the point P if I say V then V is actually that W thing okay so it is defined as the amount of work so why infinity why is that taken as infinity see infinity see we believe that at infinity the potential due to this point otherwise field due to this point is practically now zero 
zero there is zero potential at infinity see uh, we all had that one that f is equal to you know like inverse square is proportional to inverse square so if r happens to be infinity then f comes out to be zero otherwise e comes out to be zero so the film force all right all are zero at infinity so it means this particular charge has no influence at infinity that's the reason why we generally take that one as a standard all right in case of gravitation we all know the surface of the ground all right surface of the earth is taken as that standard and all the heights above the surface are taken to be h and where the potentials are described with reference to that one okay that one you have already done in class 11 all right here we go then so that is the potential what about all right potential difference between any two points okay potential difference between any two points all right is defined suppose i have two points over here let's go back to this a and b otherwise so the potential difference between these two points a and b otherwise vp minus of va what is that the potential difference between any two points is defined as the amount of work done in moving a unit positive charge from one point to another i think these are the basic definitions which we have in class 10 we've already done it let's go to the class 12 version then what do we do in class 12 let's see okay then so I want to find out what is the potential at the point P all right possibly uh, I think that's going to take some time and I think we will be done for today or might be one more topic to go after that let's see so potential at a point P I want to find out here we go so here is a plus Q charge this are point charges mind you just I'm taking a bigger structure but that's a tiny one they are called as point charges okay so let's say this is taken as an origin uh, find out here this is a point all right let's say a and somewhere here is the point B okay we all know the field at A so say that OA is equal to R let's say OA is equal to R and let's say R hat is a unit vector all right directed from O to A O is taken as origin the field at A is described as E and it is given as E will be equal to well, take the assigned unit thing 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught with a capital Q by n R square here we go that's the <coughs> that's the field uh, let me bring you that r hat thing over here so that is the field at the point a now why i'm bringing this field idea because i'm trying to find out what is the work done i'm uh, see this is this derivation is potential at a point all right in an electric field that's the derivation we are doing okay so i want to find out what is the potential at the point a so what i found here first is what is the field at a i'm just finding out that from first okay now what will I do here is I will think of this particular distance from A to B as let's say dr all right that is a tiny incremental distance I'll give the reason why I'm taking this incremental distance dr okay <coughs> so I have to find out let's say I have a plus one charge here all right and I'm trying to move this plus one charge from A to B okay so in doing so work done will be equal to let's write it work done to move plus one charge from a to b all right a b is equal to dr let's say the scalar part of it then the work done dw will be given by e with a dr factor let's say so this work done is given by e dot dr why e because E is the field there and field is the force on a unit charge that's the reason why I'm taking that unit charge over here all right so E dot dr and that comes out to be this will be equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught with a q by an r, uh, r hat dot uh, dr that's the case if I do it properly then that is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught with an dr all right r is square down here and here will be equal to a minus there have a seat so dr why is that you see this r hat and a dr are opposite to each other and this is the dot product a dot b is a b cos theta and the angle between r hat and a dr because i'm moving this way the angle between them happens to be 180 degree and cos 180 is minus one that's the reason why we have a minus over there so that is the work done all right to move a charge a unit positive charge from a to b okay so therefore 
the potential at, all right, the point B, or otherwise A, I would say. That is, the work done, all right, to move plus one charge from infinity to with point A. So, have a see here. According to the definition of potential at A, it is the work done to move unit positive charge, that is plus one charge, from infinity to that point. So I'm moving unit positive charge from infinity to this point, all right, and that is the potential at the point A, all right, and what is that? That is the total work done. So I'm going to find out this total work done as integration of dW. So I'm going to integrate this tiny work done. Why I have taken this tiny work done over here, taken as from here A to B, mind you this dr is so tiny, so incremental. I'm going to find out what is that work done here. So in the process from moving from infinity to, the, to this point, I'm taking this tiny, tiny work done, dW1, dW2, dW3. So all these tiny work done I'm taking and I'm integrating that one to find out the total work done. All right. Now, why is that? Why is the necessity of taking that tiny work done only for a small distance dr? Mind you people, this particular intensity depends on r. So farther you are away, all right, it depends on the value r. So e will take different values at different distances, at different points. So, but for this tiny incremental distance dr, we are assuming as if this f remains constant. It is not changing. And so I'm taking that all right, e dot dr as the tiny work done here. Otherwise, here also I would be getting, going for an integration part because we know just for that tiny displacement dr, we are assuming as if e is not changing. So here we go, w is equal to integration of dw and that is equal to integration minus of integration of 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught with a q by an r square and then that dr thing is there and this is infinity to that particular point and this particular point A has a position of R from infinity to R. See the total work done to move unit positive charge from infinity to the point R. That's the idea of integration and here I go that's equal to minus 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught all right and there is Q I'll bring Q here all right and that is uh, integration of dr by an r square infinity to r and that will come out to be that is equal to minus q by 4 pi epsilon naught and then here we go this is like minus 1 by r and the limit will be infinity to r here we go this so this w then will be equal to here minus q by 4 pi epsilon naught and limit here will be taken as minus 1 by r and then there is a minus minus becomes a plus for the other one and that happens to be 0 and this is equal to q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught then r that is the potential at the point a epsilon naught then r there we go mind you this potential is a scalar potential is a scalar intensity is a vector potential is a scalar but then what kind of scalar mind you potential is a sine scalar we all know work done work done by the field is taken to be negative and work done by the external agent is taken to be positive mind you so this potential when i speak about potential potential can be negative potential can be positive is that okay let me finish this session just by discussing that particular point very quickly i'm going to discuss and finish it over here let's have a see suppose i have a positive charge over here plus q charge i talk about a point here a now whether the potential at A will be positive or negative. Let's have a say. So to bring a plus one charge, who does the work? Let's have a say, who does the work? This plus Q charge will repel this plus one charge. So since it is being repelled, the field do not do the work because field is directed that way. So who have to do the work? External agent must do the work. Now since the external agent must do the work to bring this plus one charge from infinity to this point A, the potential at A is positive. But if I see on the other hand, I have a minus Q charge here and this same point A. And I'm trying to bring plus one charge from infinity. So now here, who does the work? See, minus Q charge will attract that plus one charge. So who does the work? Field does the work. And that's the reason why, since field is doing the work, it is negative. So VA 
here is negative. So we just got an idea that the potential due to a positive charge is positive and the potential due to a negative charge is negative. Hope I have made some flaws and mistakes in between in order to put the right things in the you know like right order because we all know that this is for the first time we are coming up with in classes like this. Hopefully in the next classes we're going to come up more organized. Thank you very much. Oh, 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 oh,